Welcome to this week's African Agri Overview. This week we'll be focusing on Kenya's maize market with their annual import need having a significant impact on the maize markets as far south as Zimbabwe and South Africa. All in this week's episode, so make sure to stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Johnny van der and welcome to this week's episode of the African Agri Overview. Before we dive in, I'd like to encourage you to follow us on YouTube. By doing so, you'll gain access to regular insights into the agricultural markets of Africa. Our goal is of course to provide you with valuable information that can help navigate the dynamic world of agriculture on the African continent. You can also contact our regular market analyst Jacques Pinar for more detailed reports on the African soft commodity markets. Looking at the latest movements in the Brent oil market, uh, prices again increased over the past week based on production cuts from major producers such as Saudi Arabia and Russia. But again, the price got significant resistance at the $88 mark, with the latest price currently trading on $87 per barrel. But with that said, Jock will now focus on the latest developments in the Kenyan maize market. Over to you, Jock. Good day and welcome to this week's podcast where we will look at the Kenya maize market. The Kenya market, and in particular their annual import need, has a significant impact on maize markets as far south as Zimbabwe and South Africa. Please take note, the numbers used in our graphs are our best estimates with information at our disposal. There are very little statistics on Kenyan crop production, consumption, imports and so forth. Kenya produces two crops annually. A short range crop harvesting around May, June which on average contributes about 10 to 15% of the annual crop and the long range crop harvesting between October and December and on average contributing 85 to 90% of the annual crop. This graph illustrates our Kenya maize balance sheet since 2019 and our forecast for the 2023-24 season. What catches the eye is consistent large annual imports. Kenya has become a million ton plus import market even in an above average production year. <clears throat> we estimate annual consumption at around 4 million tons and production between 2.5 and 3 million tons on average. So, where does Kenya import its large deficit from? Tanzania is Kenya's usual main import origin with Uganda also contributing. These are small, there are also small contributions from time to time from Zambia and South Africa. <coughs> Imports from the US and Mexico a possibility but has not been seen often. When Tanzania has a large crop that covers their local need and a healthy portion of the Kenya import requirement, the southern maize markets are not really impacted. However, when the Tanzanian crop is relatively small, lucrative prices in Kenya still attracts Tanzanian maize, but this usually causes a deficit in Tanzania that needs to be imported. Tanzania's preferred import markets are Zambia and to a lesser extent Malawi. With the Zambia surplus then flowing north, it limits flows south to Zimbabwe. This is especially the case when the Zambia government bans exports. It is not so easy to stop informal exports north through porous borders, but easy to stop flows south as there are only three bridges crossing the Zambezi River. This forces Zimbabwe to turn to South Africa for imports and allow GM instead of importing their preference non-GM from Zambia. So, Kenyan imports has a knock-on effect all the way to South Africa in some years. We expect the 2023-24 season to be such a year. For the 2023-24 season, we estimate Kenya should produce around 2.8 million tons versus consumption predictions in the region of 4 million tons. Therefore, at least a 1.2 million ton deficit that needs to be imported. Almost the entire Kenya need the last two and a half months has been supplied by the new Tanzania crop that commenced harvesting in June. Small contributions have been made by Uganda and South Africa. 
We are not sure about the volumes supplied by Tanzania, but Kenya on average use in excess of 300,000 tons per month. The main Kenya crop will start harvesting towards the end of September and should meet local demand until early 2024. Observers expect Kenya will be back in the import market by March-April next year. By then, Tanzania might need imports as they are not expected to produce a significant exportable surplus. Whatever surplus they produce, this season has probably already been exported to Kenya. <coughs> Tanzania will turn to Zambia to fill their deficit. However, Zambia have not allowed exports this season due to tight expected supply and unlikely to do so before their next crop harvest mid-2024. This probably points to relatively high prices in the East African region first half 2024 and a tight regional maize balance sheet as was the case last season. The next graph shows the Nairobi maize price history since 2016. From April 2022, prices moved above $400 a ton and breached the $500 a ton mark frequently during the next 18 months, as indicated by the red circle. Only in August 2023 did prices move back below $400 a ton, as indicated by the blue circle. During this 18-month period, Tanzania could not produce sufficient supply to cover local demand and the Kenya import need. Kenya continued to import from Tanzania and Tanzania was forced to import from Zambia and Malawi to fill its deficit. This scenario led to extremely high prices in both countries. With a new Kenya crop harvest imminent, price trend predictions in the immediate short term rather challenging and prices could even move well below $400 a ton. However, by March-April 2024, Kenya will need imports again, which should attract price support and not impossible. The $500 a ton mark could be tested once again, somewhere in quarter 2 2024. Remember, Tanzania might not be in a position early next year to supply the entire Kenya import need, and other import sources further afield might have to be tapped. Thank you, Job, for sharing such valuable insights. For those seeking more detailed information and comprehensive reports on sub-Saharan African soft commodity markets, I encourage you to reach out to Jock. Remember, for a deeper understanding of the ever-involving African agri-landscape, stay connected with us. I'm Dr. Johnny van Amarwe, and thank you for watching.